Yo, what's going on, Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video with pre-release for set 21, Wild Resurgence, coming up very soon. I thought it was time to tier list all the new leaders coming out with the new set. So let's go over what this tier list means exactly. We start at the top with tier one. Now I don't have any like Z or OP tier because I just don't think any deck out there at the moment is gonna be like anywhere near tier zero. I know some people have different opinions of like Android 21, maybe even yellow in the upcoming format. I just don't see anything being like above all else by like a wide margin. So I do think tier one is where the top decks are gonna slot. Now I should mention this as well. These decks that we're going to talk about today are all set 21 decks. However, we are going to talk about them in relation to each other and their power levels, as well as the other prominent decks in those same color pools. So that's also going to use. So imagine like, for example, if you believe that Trunks Jita or Golden Frieza or 21 are tier one, imagine those in that tier one bracket. And then whatever you think is tier 1.5, whatever you think is tier two, imagine those all in those brackets. And we're taking these leaders and comparing them to not only themselves within the set, but also the other leaders that we know are going to be relatively popular come set 21. Now tier 1.5, these types of decks are like almost right there at like tier one with both popularity and power. However, they'll top quite a bit less and, uh, you know, aren't going to be as strong for one reason or another as tier one decks. Tier two, these are decks that you can expect to see every once in a while. Here, I think about like from previous formats like Cumber, maybe even like uh, Spring Kai of Time, although there's definitely arguments like that for uh, for the Rogue tier as well. Rogue is just sparse, very, very unpopular, but also like can be very powerful in the uh, right pilot's hands. And basically, as you go down the tier list, it's just like basically popularity and power just decreasing and decreasing and decreasing, right? And then there's trash tier, which is just absolutely terrible. You know what? Let's go ahead and start right there. We're putting cell right in the trash tier because that errata that says you can only uh, play green Android cards is just absolutely detrimental to the deck. Even at a local level, it's just not going to be fun. I, I really do think this deck had some potential before that errata, but like obviously you had to do something about the Koitsukai and Black Mass Sand problem, right? That was just going to be way too annoying, if not like OP. But uh, they could have definitely, and hopefully they will do something. Like, I know people have been calling for them to re errata this leader in some fashion to where um, you only can't play black battle cards. Just something that really just stops the abuse of Black Mass Sand and Quitsukai, but doesn't prevent the deck from playing other great green staples. Uh, there's, that's a really big problem for this deck. But right now, the way it is, it's definitely going to start in trash tier. And that's what we kicked off the video with, guys. If you're new, make sure to subscribe. Hit that bell so you never miss a video. And now let's jump right on in to the rest of the set 21 leaders. All right. Let's go ahead and start where we should have started with Android 16, which was the first leader we ever saw from the set, right? This is a promo leader that you get by participating in your pre-release. So with Android 16, I have mixed opinions on it. Now, I'm going to let you know each of these decks, which ones I've tested more and haven't tested as much. Android 16 is one that I have not played as much, but there's a reason for that. I, I definitely thought this leader was very interesting upon reveal because it took the cards that we already knew were good in the form of like blue green Android cards that a lot of Gamma and 21 decks were playing. And it gave them the ability to be played within a green leader. Now, this green leader is really cool, but it's not perfect. For example, it only negates energy exhaust on one side, which is very, very strange, considering that a lot of the uh, in archetype cards that ignore energy exhaust only work themselves for a blue leader. So once you awaken, you lose that ability, and that's kind of annoying. However, where this leader is very cool is in that it basically reduces the cost of Android scientists by two. So it's almost like you're ramping not really it's just another way of cheating cost on battle cards which is what ramp decks do they accelerate energy to basically play larger cards faster this leader is allowed to play larger cards for less energy so it's kind of like the inverse and again we know that all those android cards are quite good especially the 21 cards that came out in power absorb but the problem with this leader is that it's green and i know that's like super cliche to say but the thing that I think about when I think about Android 16 versus like set 20 Android 21 is like you have very similar shells to where you play a lot of the same cards and you cheat costs on a lot of these things. And I will say the one coolest thing about Android 16 is that you can use the uh, four cost full power counter for two energy. That is something that 21 cannot do. So that's pretty cool. However, when you have a blue leader versus a green leader, you got to look at the staples that those colors allow you to splash. And like the biggest one off the top of my head is going to be Dimension Magic. Not having Dimension Magic or anything even remotely close to that as a green, blue, green leader is uh, not going to work out so well, in my opinion. Um, 
you get like maybe some other hand controly types of staples but 21 isn't really all that much of a hand control deck anyway and whatever you are doing in terms of hand control you can pretty much do in the blue 21 deck as well whether it's like playing bionic blitz super combos or playing kusus um those are a lot of things like you could be doing in 16 as well and like maybe you could play like rebrand but do you really want to play rebrand at that point so for that reason i think i want to put 16 in tier 2 because i don't think it's like gonna be tier 1 with 21 at all to be honest I could even maybe see an argument for tier 1.5 because really what I think carries this leader are the main deck cards it's allowed to play. So there might be an argument for 1.5 just because it's going to contain all those same cards that the good 21 decks play. Um, but for right now, I'm going to put it in tier 2 uh, because I just don't see it stacking up to uh, Android 21. You know what? Let's put it in 1.5 for now just because it will sit under 21 in my opinion. All right, now we have the flip-flop Goku Vegeta leader. I gotta say, this is one that I started with really high hopes, and this is a leader that I have tested rather extensively. Um, I thought it was really cool because it seemed like you could generate a lot of card advantage, but the card advantage you generate is fully up to your opponent in the sense that if they don't attack your leader on uh, their turn, you're not going to be generating extra draws. And there's also some annoying things your opponent can do with like manipulating what side of your leader you'll end up on. Because sometimes you want to be on like your Goku side to uh, pop a four or less in rest mode at the end of your opponent's turn. But if they attack you, you have to go to your Vegeta side and that's kind of annoying. So this leader is kind of at the mercy of the opponent, which is kind of annoying. And it's sort of like a weird yellow aggro deck, which we've seen somewhat in the past, but I just don't think it stacks up at all compared to like the Golden Frieza, the Trunks Vegeta, or the Majin Vegeta, which we know are the uh, established yellow decks. So me personally, I'm putting it in Rogue. I don't think it's trashed here because the one unique thing this deck has is that combo potential to like all in with the uh, Z deck Whis and potentially end the game. So I think that's still a cool angle to approach the game from, but I don't think it's gonna stack up nearly as well or be that popular to be honest. I could be totally wrong though. Maybe just like the yellow good stuff variant of the deck will, will carry this thing up to like tier two or tier 1.5. I'm just not seeing it right now with all the leader's weaknesses. Then we have the Frieza Swap Leader. This is one, to be honest, that I am much more impressed by compared to Flip Flop Goku. Whereas when I was first doing the videos, just going over the reveals, my opinion was very much the opposite. But I've been testing this deck quite a bit. I posted a profile here on the channel. And this deck honestly impressed me quite a bit. Uh, it's got some unique things going for it. A lot of yellow decks right now are playing Sin, Shenron, Cold Hearted, Shadow Dragon. To basically get that, like, you know, counterplay, speed, effect negation. It doesn't stop on play effects, but still, like, activate battles, on swing effects. It's very, very powerful against. And the Frieza Swap deck has that built into the archetype, which is a very unique angle, once again, to play the game from. It's also a very consistent deck because they have an in archetype zero cost extra card searcher that also sets up robotic repost. Speaking of robotic repost, that is a searchable card in the deck, right? So uh, this deck has a lot of cool things going for it. The other yellow decks don't necessarily have. However, I do think the power output of these other yellow decks are going to be a bit higher then Frieza Swap. So this one's also going to bounce between 1.5 and 2. Maybe I should have just had like tier 2 instead of 1.5. Because I do think Frieza Swap is like almost right there. Um, but I do think there are definitely three other yellow decks that overshadow it for sure. Then we have Garlic Jr. So the thing about red that you have to realize right now is like if Sin and Gogeta were going to be legal going into set 21. Honestly, I'd have to put these two decks in like Rogue or Trash tier because they would just never compare. But luckily, we did get a really good ban list going into set 21 where Gogeta and Sin are now banned. What are we looking at as the top red decks? Well, my personal opinion, you've got Pan, you've got Android 13 as your two top red decks. There are some other ones that can definitely be in the conversation. U7 Goku is possibly one that people will revisit and uh, maybe that'll see some experimentation within the meta. But I think that definitely Pan and Android 13 are gonna be our main red contenders. Now, where does that leave Garlic Jr. and Power Pole? Well, Firstly, I guess we can talk about them just in comparison to each other. Power Pole, I think, is a very cool archetype. I like the thing of doing with equipping, which is almost like a, a magic pseudo um, mechanic they kind of borrowed from, which is cool. Uh, it does draw a lot of cards, which is also quite nice, but I feel like Power Pole definitely falls off after like turn four. The boss monsters, while efficient, aren't like game breaking in any way. They're just like really big dual attackers for the most part. So it's not all that impressive, again, compared to like Pan with like the dual attacking 40k Goku Defender of Life from the Z deck, or even Android 13, which can go all the way up to its triple attacking, double striking boss monster for a total of one energy, as long as you can establish Gogeta Unison. So for that, I'm probably gonna go ahead and throw Power Pole in tier two, mostly because I just don't think it's that far away from the top red decks. Like it's a little bit less impressive, 
but the gap between like what a meta red deck is and what a good or even like mid or trashy red deck is had just been closed so so much thanks to gogeta and sin being banned so this is much closer in power to like where we expect pan and 13 to be up here in tier one so i'm gonna put it in tier two for now i think it's got some stuff going for it but not as much as like those other red decks i was talking about then there's garlic jr what garlic jr does quite interestingly is basically by a turn for one energy you more or less have like access to a baby hatch jack effect which is kind of cool the one thing i don't like about the garlic jr boss monster is that it um basically removes itself from the board at the end of the uh, opponent's turn it's played which is kind of a downside i always hate effects like that even if they are like somewhat thematic it's always annoying to invest in a card and then just have it leave due to another factor than itself that is definitely kind of annoying although i gotta admit garlic jr is not one i've tested very very much just from what I'm seeing, though, I'm going to go ahead and put it in Rogue tier. I don't think it's going to be all that popular, to be honest. So that's where I'm going to place it for now. Then we have Baby Awakening with Grudge. So this leader, surprisingly, surprisingly good. I got to bring a profile to the channel soon here. Um, I'm very impressed with what this leader's been doing. It's a very aggressive blue deck. And right now in the blue sphere, we've had mid range and we've had control. Mid range was more so gamma, and that's now banned. What might take that spot? You have like Soul Striker as one instance. And then control blue, we have 21 for sure, right? So baby comes at an interesting angle in the form of a blue aggro deck. And from what I've been playing, this deck draws a very large hand. It doesn't like flood the board super crazy. However, you do get a lot of free play from your uh Puffalization plan field card, but those cards usually go away in order to resolve servant, which actually is a good thing because the way I play Dragon Ball, I don't expect any cards I play to survive more than like one turn. So getting usage out of them for servant honestly is better than having them just like get removed by my opponent's effects, right? So I don't know, this might be overshooting a bit, but I'm gonna put baby up in tier one only because I think it's gonna be the only good blue aggro deck. And at that, I do think it's gonna be a good aggro deck. So yeah, that's where I'm putting it up here in tier one for now we have the oob deck the oob deck while not as terrible as a lot of people make it out to be i don't think it's going to be as powerful as the aforementioned decks like the 21s even the soul strikers it's got a lot of unique things going for it where it has a potential to draw extra cards if your opponent doesn't combo that is kind of cool uh there is the downside slightly of setting up your opponent's z energy with a lot of the battle cards in the deck but to a point when you give your opponent so much z energy that's not really going to matter because they're not going to be able to make use of all that z energy once they get to like you know five six seven z energy um but i think that there are just other powerful blue leaders in the mid-range sphere which i think oob would pretty much end up encapsulating so i think i'm gonna go ahead and put it in rogue now finally we have the green ssu gohan leader which is probably the most talked about leader in the set this is the leader that finally made green seem something other than complete garbage right um so that's pretty cool and the ban list we got going into set 21 just allows green to breathe a bit more because green's worst matchup was always aggro and typically red but now that gohan has its own really good in archetype floodgate and the power level of red has dropped dramatically i do think gohan is in a really good spot i'm gonna go ahead and put it in tier one for no other reason that i think it's gonna be the only meta represented green deck how represented is it gonna be i'm not a hundred percent sure yet but if you want to play a green deck going into the new format it's got to be green gohan if you want to compete right i think that's just the best one to be playing right now if you don't want to play any of the other colors if you're a diehard green player i do think it's the leader to play so overall let's just revisit our tier list here at tier one we have blue baby and green gohan green gohan i just got on talking about and blue baby i do think it's really good it's rather impressive this deck's been drawing a lot so that's always a sign of a good deck it's very aggressive which is also good and you can add blue staples into that mix like imagine being an aggro deck with uh ui kamameha which you know ssg goku crimson warrior was kind of like that although you were much more mid-rangey but now you're a pure aggro deck with access to that much combo power it's got to be pretty good 16 i still abide by this the main deck cards it's going to play are going to be so good however i think just being a green leader uh you lose out on a lot compared to 21. then we have freezer swap which again was surprisingly impressive in my testing i do just think it's overshadowed a bit by the top yellow deck so it's got to go to 1.5 tier 2 power pull yeah it's just not that far away from pan and 13 but still significantly under rogue tier these are decks that i expect to see very very sparingly uh like i said flip flop goku uh, is definitely overshadowed by the other yellow decks in tier one that's 100 percent the case but it's also just so gimmicky that i think only real dedicated players are going to play it garlic jr more the same like very gimmicky 
again, the baby hatch effect is like really interesting for a red deck for sure. I don't know if this deck puts out the uh, aggressive pressure you want to be putting out in a red deck. So that one remains to be seen. And then Oob, once again, very gimmicky. Not nearly as terrible as people make it out to be, but they're just better blue decks. And then Trash tier. Yeah, I think Cell is probably the only one that belongs in Trash tier. But overall, guys, those are my thoughts for the tier list. Again, uh, not only comparing these leaders to themselves, but also to the leaders we expect to do well in set 21 format. Let me know where you agree or disagree. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.